Hi, everyone. Greetings um, for this uh, third week of Advent. So um, happy to be with you uh, today. Um, today, we are again looking at the prophets of old as we await the birth of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And today in our readings, uh, we look at the prophet John the Baptizer. And as we think of his proclamation of the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Jesus, um, we see a baptism with water for the forgiveness of sins and for cleansing. This is an Old Testament um, idea. It's a concept. It's a practice um, from the writings of the Old Testament. In Ezekiel 36, 25, we read, uh, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be made clean. The psalmist writes in 51, verse 7, uh, Purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Uh, in Exodus uh, chapter 40, uh, verse 12, we see the preparation of Aaron, uh, the priestly class, the, the Levitical class, of the priest Aaron and his sons uh, before they engage in that work. They, they must be purified and cleansed. And in Exodus 40, 12, we read, Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the doorway of the tent of meeting and wash them uh, with water. Uh, so the concept, you know, when we see uh, John called by God as a prophet, he goes to the River Jordan and he begins to confront the people, not only the ordinary people, but the, the leaders. He calls them, you brood of vipers. He is calling them uh, into repentance. And he is offering them a baptism of water to be cleansed and to be forgiven of their iniquities, uh, forgiven of their sins. So this is the baptism that John uh, is uh, offering. Uh, and he says in our reading today, he points to, to Jesus and he says, you know, Jesus that this Messiah will come. When he comes, uh, he will not baptize you with water. In other words, he will not baptize you according to the rituals of the temple. Uh, he will baptize you with fire. And, and he goes on to say he will separate the wheat from the chaff. In other words, he will use a threshing floor and he will separate uh, the righteous from the unrighteous. And, and, and he is pointing again towards Jesus uh, as a prophet, priest, and king. And, 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 and Jesus will baptize with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Uh, John the prophet points to a different type of baptize, baptism in Christ. Uh, we even see this concept of uh, be, washing to be made clean in a miracle uh, that Jesus performs. In John chapter 9, verse 7, uh, we hear about the story of a man born blind. And he, he comes to Jesus, and Jesus uh, does a very physical miracle. Uh, he spits into dirt, and he um, rubs the mud into the man's eyes. And then he says uh, this, go, uh, Jesus told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. Um, so the man went and washed in the pool and, and came home seeing. Uh, a miracle uh, has occurred uh, in, in, in Jesus applying the mud to uh, the man's eyes and, and then washing. In other words, uh, the, the, the Jewish people hearing of this miracle would understand that as, if you will, uh, a baptism in a way um, to, to, to gain entrance into the kingdom where healing 
takes place through Christ, right? So we are looking at the prophet's role in calling the people, proclaiming the Messiah, to uh, claiming a new world order, claiming uh, a new way to reach to God. And we've said this, it's not a way of ritual. It's not a way of obligation. It's a not uh, the way of saying the exact prayer and only certain people can say the prayer and only certain people can access the altar of God. Uh, Jesus is going to usher in uh, a new way, a uh, new connection uh, to God. And it's going to be through faith. It's going to be through um, uh, surrendering our heart. It's going to be a following and and following his commandments, following his teachings, and and manifesting the fruit of the Spirit uh, in our life as disciples and followers of Christ. Uh, this this Messiah who comes as a as a babe. I, I want to point as we look at John the prophet to one other story, and it's found in Luke chapter one. Verses uh, 39 through 46. It's, it's a great uh, section of scripture. Mary is pregnant with Jesus in her womb, and she goes to visit her kinswoman, Elizabeth. Now, Zachariah and Elizabeth have had a child, are going to have a child at, a, at an old age, and Elizabeth is pregnant, and she's about six months pregnant. Uh, and, and Mary comes to her cousin and, and they talk. And when, so, so there's uh, the older Elizabeth, she has John the Baptist in her womb. And when, when Mary approaches and the unborn child hears Mary's voice, it said that the child leaped uh, in the womb of Elizabeth, right? And, and this is the story. Um, where um, we see Mary's Magnificat and we see this miracle happening. And it's a great story because it speaks of the counsel of, of women. Um, Mary and Elizabeth uh, stay together for about three months. So we would imagine that Mary stayed with Elizabeth, um, watched the birth of John the Baptist, uh, and 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 informed herself uh, about this process. She was going to undergo birth uh, with this child, um, Jesus, right? Given to her as a gift, right? So it's a wonderful story of connection and counsel, woman um, to woman, right? And it's a it's a great um, story of connection of family. And, and of John and Jesus as they're already connected within the womb. And then now we, we cut to 30 years later and John is in a river and he is calling people to repentance. And as we said in other sermon messages, uh, Jesus comes to be baptized and, and uh, John baptizes him with water. And when Jesus rises up from the water, the Holy uh, Spirit descends in the form of a dove. This is my son, whom I am well pleased. It's an anointing. It is a, an affirmation that Jesus is God's son, that Jesus has come, that the prophecies of old uh, are again being fulfilled. I want you to hear the word connection. John is connected to Jesus. Elizabeth is connected to Mary. And God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through our life, is connected with us. The baby is being born. The baby will be laid in a manger. The baby will change the world. The prophecies will be fulfilled. And a new way to reach God will be made available. One of grace and love 
forgiveness, one of mercy, one given as a gift to us. The miracle of Christmas, the awe of Christmas, is in this story. It is in these connections. So today, perhaps you're feeling disconnected to God. Perhaps you're feeling um, uh, fearful and concerned with the realities of the pandemic, the realities of your job, the realities uh, of all the stuff that comes at us in life. And, and maybe you're fearful. Maybe you're uncertain. Uh, maybe you have doubt. Uh, but our scriptures today tell us not to have fear, but actually to be able to proclaim the coming of a Messiah who saves, uh, coming uh, to save us, and that through him we might have hope. We might have um, excited anticipation for the future. We know that we are connected, not disconnected, we are connected to a loving and a gracious God who sent his son for us. The miracle of Christmas is still unfolding for us. This week, I hope that we're all able to find ways to proclaim, uh, as John the Baptist is to proclaim uh, the excitement of this time and the excitement of this gift giving and the excitement of the nativity scene and the excitement of the good news in Christ. I thank you for being here with me today. Uh, again, I am in the Goodwins Mills uh, Sanctuary today, and um, I'm excited to bring you these messages. It's been a lot of fun uh, preparing them and, and giving them on this platform. Um, I hope that you have found solace in prayer. I hope you have found solace in our worship together. I hope you have found comfort in connection with a loving and a gracious God. I thank you again for being with me today. God bless. Merry Christmas. Amen.